time for the deep dive. We're talking Super Bowl odds and futures, Teddy. You don't like these odds to win the Super Bowl, and you have the good reasons why, especially when you look at the odds. But uh, if you, you've been saying on this the show for the last couple of weeks, you got to shop around no matter what you're betting. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a great chart. Uh, the guys at Sports Insights put this together. I wanted to put it up, and I know it's a long chart. There's a million numbers on here. But this is just a handful of books in Vegas and one offshore book, okay? It's MGM, Westgate, Win, Golden Nugget, and Bet Online. Okay, just five books. And just from these five books alone, the amount of variance you can find in Super Bowl odds is ridiculous. The ridiculous is it's expected. <laughs> it's dramatic. I mean, literally from walking across the street, all right, from one shop to the other, you know, you have a choice between you want the Falcons at ten to one or you want sixteen to one. Your choice. You can get either bet. Atlanta wins Super Bowl. You can win ten dollars for every dollar or sixteen. Well, obviously you want the sixteen. All you got to do is walk across the street. Or click on a different app. Uh, Raiders, you can get them at 6-1 to one to win it all or 12-1. to one. Your choice. Available right now. Your choice. You know, Giants at 8-1 to one or 20-1. to one. Your choice. Vikings, you can get 20-1 to one or you can get 40-1. to one. Your choice. <laughs> you know, if you want to bet on the Jets, and I don't know why you want to bet on the Jets to win the Super Bowl, but if you do, you can get them at 125-1. to one, Make a nice little score that just win the Super Bowl. Yeah, 125-1. to one. Or... You can walk across the street and get them at 500 to 1. Four times the odds at one shop versus the other. 49ers, three times the odds. You're going to 300 to 1 or 100 to 1. A team that might win, you know, is the Giants. You have two and a half times difference. 8 to 1 versus 20 to 1. This is not hard work. It's nothing that you have to do other than look for the best odds and then make your bet there. That's all you have to do. And yet people are too lazy to do that. I mean, it doesn't take any handicapping. There's no luck involved. People ask me all the time, what's the biggest difference between sharps and squares? How do I make how do I be more like a sharp? How do I be more like a sharp? The biggest difference is betting skills, not handicapping skills. There are many recreational betters. I'm not going to call them square. Recreational betters that I know, they're better handicappers than so-called sharps, but they don't bet the games as well. They don't make the bets at the right times. Not even close. This chart gives us a perfect example. A classic chart one more time. Doesn't take any skills. All it takes is paying attention. <laughs> Opening up accounts. We need to open up accounts. And you get a dramatically different return on investment. ROI is what we're all looking for. I don't know how, I mean, that's a rant. I mean, there's a lot more to talk about on this subject, but that's my rant, Polly. It it's really is one of the situations where you want to be better at betting? <laughs> Shop around. Well, you can take advantage of bad numbers, though, if you, what you feel is a bad number. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't agree with, you know, locking up. You can lock up your money in July. You just don't have to use most of your bankroll on it. We've seen bad numbers before. You saw the Falcons last year. There was great value in the Super Bowl. The 07 Patriots, the 98 Vikings, especially the 98 Vikings when the markets didn't know how good they'd be, and they went 15-1. and one. So you don't have to drop a bomb on it, but I, I definitely think futures are worth a play, whether football or basketball, whatever it is. Well, look at the – again, let's flash that graphic one more time and go down to the very bottom where it says hold percentage. Okay. And these are reputable books. They're good books. They're books that you and I bet at. They're books we have no problems recommending. There are many books that are going to have greater hold percentages than these when it comes to their odds to win whatever, you know, Super Bowl, World Series, NBA championship. But the best you're going to find is the books holding about 25% and as high as 37% on this chart. And I'm telling you, you find much higher elsewhere. That's not 11 to 10 when the house cut is 25%. Okay, you're, you're not laying 120 to win a dollar. The house cut is dramatic and significant when it comes to these type of future wagers in a way that it's not dramatic and significant when it comes to season win totals. That's why we spent all summer talking about the NFL season win totals and which, you know, this team we like them over, this team we like them under. You can bet against a team for a season win total. You can't bet against a team on a Super Bowl odds, you know. You can lay 11 to 10 or 
even if you don't have a good book, you lay minus 115 uh, on the uh, NFL win totals. Super Bowl odds, you know, you're may laying a minimum minus 125, minus 130, minus 135. The house takeout significant on just about all of these. All right, tomorrow we finish out the AFs. Good job, Teddy. Great job with that chart as well. Yeah, one last thing that I do want to talk about is opportunity cost. When you talk about making a bet in July, a future bet in July or in August, okay, you're locking up that money now instead of having that money to use all football season or at least until October, let's say. A wager here could cost you, if you don't have a deep enough bankroll, could cost you the chance to make a better wager somewhere else. So whenever I'm looking to do something with the future books, okay, I always want to make sure, A, that I'm adequately bankrolled, and B, that it's not going to cost me something where I'm not going to be able to get down on a better wager than I could. But, I mean, shop around. I've been talking, I've been harping all summer. At least three books. Be in at least three books. This is why you need to be in at least three books. Um, you know, go to the SBR bonus page. Find some good bonuses at A-rated books and open three friggin' accounts today. It really is that simple. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to SBRPicks.com. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.